Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 205 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, August the 23rd, 2011. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. Nice to have you here. Great to see you. Yeah, it's been a while. How was the vacation? Oh, it was awesome. I didn't really want to come back. No. I, Not that I, I didn't want that. to come back to Category 5. I didn't, no. you know. This was like the highlight of the week. vacation mode. And, yeah. You know. So, good time, good time. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I had some nice time at the cottage, but it was hard to come back because uh, I said about it on my blog, but I I was like so used to 24-7 with Becca and the kids, so coming back, it was it was mm-hmm. really tough, having to be away yeah. at work every day and stuff like that. So. Back to reality. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Nice to see everybody joining us in the chat room. We've got quite a crowd there. Uh, and make sure you do join us in the chat room. Category5.tv uh, is where you'll find it. And also, you can uh, you can get onto Freenode if you're using an IRC client. And our chat room uh, is pound category 5. Very busy show planned for tonight. I know. But before we start into that, though, I should say, how is the sound tonight, my friends? Is it crystal clear? Crystal clear with that Behringer <laughs> mixer with preamp. Xenix preamps and beautiful stuff. All that fancy stuff. Nice. But it sounds good. I think so. Mm-hmm. Nice to get rid of the, the damaged hardware. We're, we're still obviously waiting for the server. There were some little choppinesses off the top. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up, and so it's acceptable. <laughs> Chris Reich. I know what you're Someone's, doing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're still we're still waiting on that server. I did get some good news this, uh, today, though, is that uh, they have ordered in the server. Oh, great! Which is going to make its way to Toronto and then work its way up to Barry. So, Excellent. really, uh, really Progress. looking forward to that coming in, and then yes. we can get past all of the issues that we've had mm-hmm. since our power surge in the spring. Where I believe we're finally through the audio problems. Now we're going to be getting through the uh, the choppy system and the and the lack of power as far as broadcasting goes. So that's very exciting. You can find cool. out more about the server at our website category5.tv. Really exciting. If you click on new broadcast system up at the top of the website, uh, you'll get to actually see uh, what the server is going to look like. As well as that, you're going to be able to find out a little bit more about the specs that we've chosen, why we've chosen those, and uh, and how we're going about building that server. Once all the hardware is in, I'm excited to say that we're actually going to be doing a uh, basically a, an on-air build. So I'm going to be putting together that server on the air. Um, that's something I'm really looking forward to as it's been a long time since we've done a hardware build. It uh, really feels like it's been a massively long time. Cool. Yeah. So you watch all your frustrations on air, well, watch the veins I, in I your forehead pop. I don't any frustrations. <laughs> Is this real wood? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Good. Thankfully. Mm. <laughs> As I was saying, very busy show tonight. Uh, we are going to be announcing a giveaway where you can win a year supply of Eco Alkalines batteries. Stick around for that. Mm-hmm. Also, we've got your questions. Uh, we've got uh, a pogo plug to give away. Cool. In a very interesting way. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about that. If you follow my blog, you already know what's going on. But tonight, we are launching a new program on our show. And uh, I, uh, what I, what I, all I can tell you right off the bat is make sure you get onto our website. If you haven't already done so, register for a free viewer account in order to participate in tonight's special feature Mm -hmm. where the award is a pogo plug or 100 viewer points is the runner-up prize, Uh, 25 viewer points is the third place prize. So there might be some pretty exciting action later on in the show and the pogo plug is going to be the grand prize. So, So make sure you're registered on our website. Make sure you're logged in. Make sure you check off that little box that says remember me. Very important stuff. That's all I'm going to tell you because we're going to be uh, getting into the action uh, a little bit later on in the show. Mm -hmm. So start limbering up. Yeah. Space Fish, you saw him last week. Mm -hmm. There he is. I said on Twitter, oh, see, he was really, really still there. And it's like, oh, did the feed lock up? 
No, he's just he's I He's trying to escape. <laughs> He's floating around in space. <laughs> I, I thought I had a good idea, and I gave him some, some pellet food just mm-hmm. before the show because I'm like, okay, well, that will give space fish energy. Get because all wired it, up. Well, he kind of failed us last week. And there he is again. He's just kind of hovering at the top. I think he's camera how does, shy. How does he stay so still? He stays so still that I honestly think that the mm-hmm. camera is like locked up or the computer's locked up. I had to do a double take, and I was like, oh, yeah, he's actually sitting that still. Still in oh Tricky now he's guy. oh he's st- still <laughs> literally just hanging on the. T- <laughs> At the I was just thinking by the end of the show we're gonna be like oh he's still in that he's position that was food that we gave him. <laughs> no he's he's doing just fine but he's a little bit a uh, little bit unenergetic let's just say that much. <laughs> it might be the lights maybe like they they're nocturnal. oh maybe yeah so they're so the bright come and, on he's and he's like. Yeah, the lights in here. I'm getting the suntan as we sit here. So, what have you got coming up in the news? Oh my goodness, all sorts of amazing, awesome, wonderful things. So let's see. Coming up in the newsroom, virtual touch helps keyhole surgeons to feel tumors. Radio antennas that can be sewn directly onto clothes have been developed by U.S. researchers. iOS 5 to include early earthquake warnings for users in Japan. HP plans to stop making PCs after Best Buy requests the return of the failed touchpad. Stick around. These stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Well, that's some scary stuff. I know. What's that going to do to the industry? We also have a big announcement to make. Uh, Tonight, we are reopening our phone line. Uh, The cat phone is going to be available to you later on in the show, so make sure you've got your phone nearby the computer as you're going to have a chance to to call in and give us your thoughts on, uh, on those news items. All right, uh, we've added, uh, I'm on Google+. Plus. You can find me at uh, cat5.tv slash G+, for my profile. And you'll see that uh, in various places on our website, category5.tv, we now have a plus one button. And uh, so you can you can uh, plus one uh, some of the episodes of Category 5 TV, and we'll see how that goes. All right. Let's, uh, let's just, oh, before we jump into viewer questions, mm-hmm. there was a pretty good size earthquake tremor today you know i heard about it yeah. i didn't feel it and i actually was completely oblivious to it until uh Were you i started swimming seeing... at the time like how did no, you No, i was that? sitting at my desk but um sitting at your desk which is hovering in the air by elastics yes actually yeah. interesting i was i was at the office at the time and what was weird is i was sitting i was sitting at my computer that wasn't the weird part but <laughs> i seriously all of a sudden i just felt dizzy I, I thought i was dizzy so i took off my glasses and i set them down and i was i was still going like this and i was like that's weird cuz it wow. was it was different because the last earthquake that i felt it was was like a rumble and you knew mm-hmm. it was an earthquake and you know there's things shaking and stuff this one literally the building was swaying back and forth but how i realized that there was something kind of off and it wasn't just me as I looked forward and I've got blinds on the window in front of my desk and the blinds are swaying oh. in perfect motion with me so it was a really weird experience wow yeah that's really eerie <laughs> yeah so of course we're up here in Barrie and it was way down in the states mm-hmm. where this actually took place so to think that it uh, that it reached that far is is yeah, it's a kind of unnerving and, yeah kind of scary a little bit but mm-hmm. hopefully uh, everybody's all right and i'm not sure i haven't heard news as to uh if there's any damage that uh, that was caused by that at this point uh but um yeah what was your experience maybe uh, pop us a message in the chat room category 5.tv mm-hmm. Okay, uh, new viewers in the chat room please let krista know that uh, that you're there so that she can say hello to you and uh, we'll jump straight into viewer questions if we could. I know Great. we've got uh, a lot to cover tonight. If you've got questions, you can email us live at category5.tv. And, of course, you can join us in that chat room on our website as well. Awesome. So let's jump into our first, uh, it's actually not really a question. Um, during, oh, sorry, this is from Emil. He says, during hey, episode two or three, 203, you told me how to add Category 5 TV to XBMC, and here's the result in the form of a YouTube video. I'm not sure if you have the oh, link yeah? there, do you? I can, uh, I can certainly pull it up. Let's just bring up my email here. He says, thanks for the help. Extra PHP tutorials yeah, would be great. I remember the question and talking about XBMC and using, this is like a multimedia server that you can install on your computer and it comes mm-hmm. up on your, your flat screen TV or however you want to set it up. And uh, it's really a, a fantastic system. 
But he was having trouble getting Category 5 working on the system, so we provided a, uh, some information about our RSS feedback in Episode 203. And uh, sounds like, well, he says, here's the result. Let's take a look. So there's the, the XBMC window, what you see on the, on the TV. So he's added Category 5 Technology TV to the menu. There's uh, some of our episodes being controlled by his mouse. Very cool. And alas, Category 5 working on XBMC. Very cool. Emil, thanks for, uh, for sending that in. I hope uh, that you're enjoying having Category 5 up on the big screen. That's very cool. Yeah, awesome. Hmm. Thanks, Emil. Good to know that that, uh, that that works. So if you're having trouble getting Category 5 working on XBMC, I'll uh, recommend that you check out episode number 203 of Category 5 TV. That'll be your chance to uh, get it set up and working for you. So just before we hop on to the next question here, in the chat room there's a little bit of discussion about stuttering and lagging sound and oh. video. Hmm. Don't know if there's anything we can do about that at the moment. Unfortunately, no. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's bearable, gang. Uh, hang in there, and uh, hopefully if, uh, if there are issues there, then uh, there will be uh, a good quality downloadable version available for you. Unfortunately, we are still working through the server issues. Our one big bottleneck right now is the fact that our, our main broadcast server got zapped in a power surge. Um, so we're constantly, tr you know, we're trying to get through this, this time right now while we're waiting for the new server to come in. Uh, and in the meantime, we're, we're still on the air, we're still broadcasting faithfully, but we do expect that there are some issues. And unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do about that, uh, but we do our best to continue on. So I apologize for any inconvenience, but hopefully the show is, is still enjoyable for you. Okay. Okay, so next question. Thanks, Chris Reich. Chris Reich just mentioning that the mics sound fantastic tonight. Woohoo! Yeah, we've got the headsets because we are pop stars, Chris. Every once in a while we have a, a hair flip or a... You know, Robbie does hair flips better than I do, though. I do them very, very well. Mm -hmm. See? He's pro. At 23.98 frames per second. So moving on. Um. Yes, moving right along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's a question from Joel Coulson. Hey, Joe. Hey, Robbie. We're using Cobian. Uh, Cobian? Cobian? Cobian. Yeah. The newest version. Okay. In exclusions, it has two options. Include only these files and exclude these files. When you looked at the software on an old episode, you only explained the excluded section. Can, can you please explain include only these files? Do the files have to be in the source section for this operation to work? Wow. Yeah, we're going back. Mm -hmm. Cobian, uh, I looked at that uh, episode number 68. We're at episode number 205. So it was a while ago. It was a long while ago that we had a look at that. So so what um, exactly is Cobian? Cobian is a backup software for, for Microsoft Windows. Okay. It's really good. It's free. It uses volume shadow copy, which means it takes snapshots of your of your system so that it can back up things on the fly. So if you've got like a running database or programs running, you can still back up your system mm -hmm. without having to close everything down. It's it's really That's a fantastic cool. application. Just the fact that it's free as well. Um, really uh, just makes you smile. Uh, I'll put a link for the free download in uh, our show notes for episode number 205. Now, I just happen to have on my old file server, which is still up and running because I use it for an FTP server, I happen to have our old Cobian setup installed. And on this server, I can, I can kind of demonstrate for you. Um, so what, what, what they're talking about here is under special under the properties for your backup. You've got include only these files and exclude these files. Excluding the files is, is quite straightforward. It means that you're gonna omit certain program or certain file types, mm -hmm. uh, certain directories from within. Um, so that way you're able to um, actually um, l omit stuff that you don't want to be a part of your backup, temporary files, things like that include only these files, think about that as a bit of an, an opposite direction. So in your files, you're actually telling it what you want to back up. But here, you're saying, okay, well, within that criteria, 
So yes, the files does matter, okay? So your source directory does matter. But within that criteria, only include these files or this type of file. You can use masks. So for example, if you go add and then mask, you can enter, as, as the example shows there, let's say you want to do a backup of just your music. So you go star.mp3 knowing that all your music is in fact mp3 files. Or if it's all pictures from your, your home camera, it might be star.jpg. Um, so in that case, it's going to back up only the JPEG images, and it's going to leave all the thumbs.db files, and it's going to leave all the, the extra stuff. So use that sparingly and only if you need to. Um, it would be uh, for specific types of backup sets. You'll see over here that I actually have multiple backup sets from when I did use Cobian uh, on this particular server. I still use it uh, on my virtual machines to back up the, the Windows systems. But So you can have, uh, for example, your My Pictures backing up separately from your My Documents, for example. And you can tell it to exclude your pictures and uh, I, I guess it just depends on what you want to do. So hopefully that makes uh, perfectly good sense. But yes, files does matter. So here I'm backing up unraid slash category 5. And then in special, if I wanted it to only back up my video files, I would go star.avi, add another mask, star.mp4, add another one, star. Uh, what other masks might I use for... Uh, let's just say that. How's that? So let's see what it's done. It's created those two includes. So it's only going to include things that fall into that. So anything outside of that from Category 5 directory is going to be omitted. So hopefully that, uh, that clarifies that for you. And uh, thank you very much for the question. It's interesting to, to see that you're, you're watching some of the old episodes as well. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying those. Some information may certainly be out of date, but uh, we try to do stuff that is going to be um, usable for years and years <laughs> to come. I've got some viewer uh, photos who, that have come in this week <gasps> for Excellent. 100 viewer points. Annoyance watches Category 5 TV uh, on a Zoom device and sometimes from the PC using Ubuntu 10.10. Uh, because they actually also found that they didn't like the Unity platform, so they reverted back to 10.10. .10. Um, since Annoyance missed a couple of shows uh, recently, uh, in this picture they, they said that this is them trying to catch up by watching multiple episodes of Category 5 at once using their <laughs> two devices. So thank you very much for the, uh, for the email, Annoyance, and uh, thanks for the picture. Cool stuff, and... Uh, I see the chat room was up there on the screen as well, and I'll send you 100 viewer points as thanks for, for sending that in. Pyrus Rock This World uh, says that they are trying to keep up with the chat room as they watch the live show, and here's the setup. There it is. We've got Category 5 running on the, the website. We've got the chat room, Krista chatting away there. They've got a... It looks like a, a Dvorak keyboard layout, so you're mm -hmm. learning Dvorak. Good for you. Cool-looking keyboard with some illumination and an apple. A couple of apples. You like apples, I see. And Vegemite. I don't know why I had to include that. That's good. So you're healthy and you watch Category 5. Very That's good. good. That's good. Yeah. And you're learning Dvorak, which is very cool. Uh, I, I really want to learn Dvorak for... And this is a different keyboard layout. You look at your keyboard and you see the Q-W-E-R-T-Y up at the top left. That's QWERTY. That means you've got a QWERTY keyboard. Uh, Dvorak is a different layout which is designed more for computers. D uh, QWERTY was designed for typewriters mm -hmm. so that the things wouldn't jam as they're flipping up like this. But So why computers still use it? It's beyond anyone. Nobody quite understands it, but mm -hmm. all, all computers practically these days uh, still use QWERTY. So switching to Dvorak is better for... Uh, your uh, ergonomics by oh, far okay. and as well you get like 70 percent faster typing it's ridiculous hmm. you know i kind of want to be around when you switch yeah i want to watch you the flames <laughs> yeah no, for the first for the first while for sure once i get 70 percent mm -hmm. faster than i already am i'm afraid that the the computer might not keep up oh my goodness already have that problem. See, I don't sometimes. think I could I could do that because I when I type now if I type too fast, like I I write my name but I spell it wrong about 90% of the time Your own just cuz I'm going. And so I mean if I was 70% faster, I have I have no idea. It would be bad okay. news. 
Just typing your own name. Well, it's just, I guess mine's pretty easy. R O B B I E. Mm -hmm. That's all good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, let's see. I would like to let you all know a little bit about a contest that is going on, starting right here at Category 5 TV. Uh, we are privileged to be sponsored by Eco Alkalines, mm -hmm. and you can uh, you can actually find out a whole bunch of information about them by going to their website. We've got a hot link at cat5.tv slash eco, and as you see on their website, they manufacture eco-friendly batteries. They're fantastic. They're earth-friendly. They have 0% cadmium. They're lead-free, and they're mercury-free. Much better for the environment. And mm -hmm. they stressed also to me, I had an interesting discussion with them a couple weeks ago, where it's important to note that not only are they physically, like this battery mm -hmm. that I'm holding in my hand is better for the environment, but also their practices as far as the manufacturing process is oh, more environmentally friendly. Yeah, the mm -hmm. fact that they're doing as, as much as they can to use recycled material, for example, um, even going so far as offsetting their carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So they have a smaller carbon footprint, of course, than, than most battery manufacturers, but even the, the, the comparatively smaller carbon footprint that they do have, they're offsetting mm -hmm. that with the Carbon Fund, carbonfund.org. So very, very, cool. very cool what they're doing, and they're good batteries. They actually now I've seen the the statistics that show that they perform just as well as uh, the big brands, and you know who I'm talking about, the two big ones. Uh, they perform just as well, but mm, that's great. I've actually found, and I've used multiple different batteries and microphones and stuff, but I've actually had uh, better life with these batteries than I than I have with any other battery. Oh, that's which great. Was that's so unusual. Yeah. yeah. So what we'd like to do. In our partnership with Eco Alkalines, is we'd like to uh, present you, the viewers of Category 5 TV, an opportunity to actually obtain a one year supply of Eco Alkalines batteries. So if you head on over to category5.tv tonight and you click on Robbie's blog, which is over on the left hand side, um, you can do that anytime between now and September 26th, which is the cutoff. And uh, during that time, it's, it's really simple. You know what uh, what they need to do. Yeah, so if you want to have a chance to win this, all you have to do is you can tweet it on Twitter. Is that correct? Follow them on Twitter. Follow them yeah. on Twitter. Sorry. It's or all here. like them yeah. on Facebook. Yep. Or you can retweet. Um, I believe you have something in your blog. Yeah. And that's at category5.tv slash blog. That's right. Um, and there's an actual specific tweet that you'll need to retweet, which is coming out this week. So be watching for that. Make sure you follow them on Twitter. Make sure you like them on mm -hmm. Facebook. And that's your chance. Those are your ballots. And all the contest details are actually on my blog, category5.tv slash blog. And you'll see there is an article, Win a Year Supply of Eco Alkalines Batteries from Cat5 TV. And uh, we're very excited about that. I think it's, uh, it's just a fantastic, I mean, who doesn't need batteries anyways? So... Um, I was surprised because I, I've always wanted to be as environmentally conscious as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and in the process of everything, I'm learning a lot about the manufacturing process and what goes into batteries and realizing that the, the heavy metals that are in rechargeable batteries are actually much more dangerous and worse for the environment than, mm -hmm. than you would expect from something that you think is going to be more environmentally friendly because you think it's rechargeable, so it's it's a renewable thing, and, and you think yeah. that you're doing better for the environment. And I've always believed that, but then I'm yeah. learning that this is actually not uh, not necessarily a good practice. Mm -hmm. And there are other issues involved in that as well. The, the uh, electricity that's used to charge batteries and stuff is apparently much more um, than you would expect. So just interesting stuff but so we have uh, those available to you cat5.tv slash blog category5.tv is on our website uh, and just join uh, just zip over to my blog and you'll see the information there to, uh, to get into that contest and hopefully uh, well good luck and uh, the, it's going to be very exciting we'll be ta uh, talking about it a little bit over the next several weeks because the contest is actually going to be uh, the prize is awarded on September 27th on right here on Category 5 TV. Um, so make sure you get your ballots in and find out more on my blog. Cool. More of your questions. I think we've we got a couple of minutes left. A couple more here. <laughs> this one 
Sorry, the lingo actually is just amusing. Oh, okay. um, from Catherine, she says, I have a hey, really Catherine. ignorant noob question. Oh. What are viewer points and what, if anything, are they used for? It's a good question. Yes. Uh, viewer points are a mechanism for registered viewers on our website. It's a free service. Uh, you can register for free, but in so doing, you have the chance to accumulate what's called a viewer point. And by doing that, you're getting the chance to win virtual awards, like um, we've got our honors medal, for example, so people are able to win that award. Uh, it's a virtual award, but it sits on your profile and it shows that you're an active member of Category 5. Then uh, as we get into the higher numbers over the next several months, we're going to be seeing some people entering the, you know, the 5,000 viewer points, the 10,000 viewer points area. And when that starts happening, then there are going to be some tangible prizes, such as coupons that you can redeem your, uh, your points for. Uh, once you hit a certain plateau with your, view your viewer points, you might get a coupon or you might get a prize or you might get a discount on a piece of software or hardware. Um, wow. So there will be details that will be disclosed throughout the course of, of the show. So all you need to know at this point is, is get registered on our website. It's free. And start saving up your viewer points because as we go, uh, as ideas come in, uh, as sponsors come in to provide uh, different awards to you, then all of a sudden we've got chances for you to redeem those points. So, Cool. Thanks Excellent. for the question. Not a silly noob question at all. Um, so here's <clears throat> another question from Emil. He's just very, very curious this week. Hey, Emil. Uh, hey, Robbie and the gang. I was the a bit gang. late you, last week. I guess week. qualify as the gang. Because I look so hip, yeah. I popped my collar the, tonight just for that. It's the uh, it's the the denim, <sighs> mm -hmm. the gang. It's coming back. Yeah, yeah. You're bringing it back. I try. You go, girl. <laughs> Says I was a bit late last week, so I missed the biggest part of the live show. Thank you for answering my question. That helped. I am now also watching some YouTube channels with HTML, CSS, PHP, and JavaScript to learn it. Here are two good Very sites cool. for people that want to learn this. And the first is phpacademy.org okay. and thenewboston.com. Cool. Interestingly, the New Boston also has your Category 5 web development series posted on his YouTube channel. Again, oh. thanks for the answer. Very nice. Very cool. Thanks, Emil. I'll post those links in the show notes for episode mm -hmm. number 205 at category5.tv. We would uh, we'd love to uh, include those for you. In the meantime, uh, I guess it's just about time for the news, unless we've got a you know a quick question in the chat room. Uh, you can send that in at the, at the chat room. Just make sure it's attention Robbie F. Or are you Krista tonight? I'm just Krista, Krista. tonight. All right. Mm -hmm. Very well. Very well. We'll give you a second. Were there any new viewers in the chat room? Everybody's got your phone ready if you want to call into the cat phone this evening. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't see anything coming in. No questions? None? You know everything? They don't even have to be that kind of questions. Just like <laughs> greets from areas of the world. You've got two... Oh, 30 seconds. Hey, everybody. Uh, Cal Hydro. How's the Acronis True Image... Uh, can restore a system image to different hardware using this plugin. Oh, it's a link to a plugin for Acronis True Image. Is that right? I totally didn't mm. follow. I think so. <laughs> there is a link in the chat logs. Cool. Go get it. Cool. Yeah. Okay, well, if there are no questions and nobody uh, who's professing to be new tonight... Let's rock on to the news then. Yeah. Cool. All right. So from the Category5.tv newsroom, a Leeds University study has combined computer virtualization with a device that simulates pressure on a surgeon's hand when touching human tissue remotely. This could enable a medic to handle a tumor robotically and judge if it is malignant or benign. Cancer specialists hope the new system will help to improve future treatment. In current keyhole procedures, a surgeon operates through a tiny incision in the patient's body guided only by video images. Using keyhole techniques as opposed to major invasive surgery helps improve healing and patient recovery. However, surgeons can't feel the tissue they're operating on, something which might help them to find help them to find and categorize tumors. 
the tactile feedback, the texture, the stiffness of the tissue is taken away in oh, laparoscopic <laughs> surgery, <laughs> said Dr. Rob Houston, the co-supervisor of the study. The computer sends a signal to the device to tell it the force you are applying. You can actually feel the response forces that you would have felt on your hand. Very cool. However, Dr. Houston believes the work is still a long way from full medical use, saying there are a lot of technical challenges to overcome before this can be integrated into surgical devices. Radio antennas that can be sewn directly onto clothes have been developed by U.S. researchers. The team from Ohio State University created a prototype using plastic film and metallic thread. The scientist reported in a IEEE journal. <laughs> IEEE. <laughs> <laughs> the system's range is four times greater than that of a conventional antenna worn on the body. The technology could potentially be applied in a number of fields, but is primar primarily designed for military use. Our primary goal is to improve communications, reliability, and the mobility of the soldiers, said Chi oh, Chi Chi Chen, <laughs> one of the researchers. Sorry, <laughs> but the same. <laughs> sorry to do that, too, Krista. <laughs> But the same technology could work for police officers, firefighters, astronauts, anybody who needs to keep their hands free for important work. Apple Chief Executive Steve Jobs sent an email to Japanese employees immediately after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami offering help and support if they or their families were affected by the disaster. And his company is now extending some of that support to the people of Japan. 3G cell phones are compelled by Japanese law to include SMS-CB technology, which allows mass broadcasting of messages to any cell phone within a designated area. And Apple intends to use that technology to offer citizens of Japan an early warning system in event of earthquake. Japan has a sophisticated early warning system, which collects readings from more than a thousand seismic sensors, and while traditional alerts are posted by radio, TV, and text message, 9 to 5 Mac reports that earthquake reports will be added to Apple's notification center in iOS 5, which is expected to be released in September. Users will, of course, have the option to turn off the feature since it may reduce your battery life. Now, is it just me, or did you perk up as soon as you heard Apple? I was Apple. I was actually kind of wondering if you intentionally uh, plugged that in there, you know, because it because <laughs> I was here. Let's make Krista happy. There you go. Some positive Apple news. Go Apple. <laughs> U.S. retailer Best Buy has been unable to sell their stock of touchpad tablets that it ordered from HP and last week announced that they wanted HP to take them back. Similarly, Deal A Day site Woot offered touchpads at a very aggressive price and only managed to sell 612 of them. Ouch. This is for a site that often sells out goofy tech widgets in hours. When the touchpad was gearing up for release, there seemed to be a fair amount of interest among geeks. But what happened? David Adams from osnews.com thinks that one thing that doomed the touchpad was the fact that it was rushed into the market. With the iPhone and then the iPad, Apple had the luxury of being able to perfect the device because it didn't have the competitive pressure. But the iPad is out there selling like mad. And the other tablet vendors feel that they can't wait, that they're losing their window of opportunity, so they rush the product and it shows. And then Hewlett Packard confirmed reports that it plans to stop making PCs, tablets, and phones in order to refocus on software. And they have agreed to buy UK software, software from Autonomy for 7.1 billion pounds. Really? About 11.7 .7 billion dollars, is that right? Yeah, sounds oh right. Oh my goodness. Wow. HP, They're serious about this. Yeah, no kidding. HP added that it was considering selling its personal systems group, which includes the world's biggest PC making business, and that it will discontinue its WebOS devices. The touchpad was launched less than two months ago, with models starting out at about $650. But when they heard HP was pulling the plug, many retailers jumped ship and marked the device down to as low as $100. The mad frenzy, which finally caused demand for the product, resulted in most retailers selling out of the device as quickly as if it were an iPad 2. What are your thoughts? So, everyone get your dialing fingers ready, pick up the phone, or you can use Google Voice. Call us now on the Category 5 phone to have your say, number 705-739-1056. Did you buy a touchpad? Are you angry that HP pulled the plug? Are you upset for having spent so much for your device? Or you can tell us about HP's big announcement to shut down their computer systems arm. Is this a bad decision for HP, and why do you think it came to this? So call 
Call now. Hmm. Dial in 705-739-1056. I really can't believe it. It's <laughs> like, for everybody who's gone out and bought a touchpad at the price that it was in the store... And now it's $100. And then it went down to 100 bucks. Like, would you not be upset about that? I think I'd be a little Give us a call if that's you. I always think it's like a like an angry child. They're like, well, fine. And, you know, just Didn't like stomping their feet. It and kind of felt that way. Mm-hmm. Okay, Best Buy didn't want to keep our our tablets, so we'll just shut it down. <laughs> not shut it down, anymore. boys. It's like mm-hmm. Gordon Ramsay got a hold of HP and shut down the kitchen. Just because something wasn't going right. I don't know. What do you think? I, yeah. I wonder what's going to happen next because they've got all these devices that are out there, and quite frankly, they're nice devices. These are good tablets, you got to admit. But what's going to happen with the operating system? Uh, are people going to suddenly, you know, obviously there's the problem, you know, the concern over WebOS and HP's lack, like possible removal of their support for that. But will we start to see people opening up to hacking the, the tablet? the touchpad and and all of a sudden Mm -hmm. there's this whole movement of you know those who were lucky enough to get a a a hold of one possibly for 650 dollars possibly for 99 dollars those are the i guess the fortunate ones are the ones that got it for cheap but really they sold out Mm -hmm. like like instantly you go onto a website hp had them on their website for i think 99 dollars for the 16 gig version and a couple minutes later they were all gone well you put something down like that to a hundred dollars why would you not so it's like you get this piece of technology so who cares if it's you know not any good or if it's not as good as others so but who cares i think hardware wise it's it is a good tablet i think it's a good Mm -hmm. speedy responsive tablet it's got lots of great features and it's modern is the, is this uh, this guy from osnews.com, David Adams? Was he correct in thinking that, you know, perhaps they really try, they tried to push themselves into that market too quickly, and nobody was ready for it? Maybe the consumer weren't mm. ready for it. Is it that they put their iPad competing product into a market where they priced it at the same price point to the same, you know, user base as far as cost goes? Mm. Could that be a factor? Could it be that uh, because they were charging so much for it, the user base of the the PC, which is traditionally a, uh, a less a lower spender, to, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, we we don't uh, on the PC we're we're not used to spending as much as you do on a on an Apple device. So shouldn't the iPad be more expensive than the than the I guess what they wanted to be the iPad killer, hmm. or was it the HP killer, their own product? Uh, I'd love to uh, to receive a call. If you can pick up the phone and give us a call or use Google Voice, uh, R.W. Nash, uh, one of our news guys, was mentioning that uh, if you use Google Voice, you can call us up for free from U.S. and Canada. And, of course, uh, from the U.K., you can call us up for one cent per minute. But, of course, uh, there's no charge to call uh, other than the fact that you'll you'll just pay the long distance to give us a ring. So, uh, so we thought we'd give it a try. So mm-hmm. if you'd like, pick up the phone. Let us know what you think about the whole kerfuffle. Uh, over HP and their uh, their decision to close down their their PC end of things, and that's a scary thing mm-hmm. too. Thinking about you know the the quality level of HP computers, and from a consumer base, I think walk being able to walk into a store and and say you know I'll I'll get this good quality HP computer. They they make good computers, mm-hmm. plain and simply. So if they close that down, who's the next best thing? Really. I, I'm I'm almost really glad at this point that uh, that I went with a clone, like an OEM system. I'm building our own system for the new server. I'm, uh, you know, there's other reasons that I'm glad for that. But now hearing uh, all this over HP, I'm thinking that oh, it's probably a good thing that I didn't get that HP server that we were looking at so wide-eyed because where's the support going to be? Did anyone in the chat room uh, purchase an HP touchpad? And certainly, uh, if, if that was you, I would encourage you to pick up the phone and give us a call. We'll give it a couple more minutes to see if, uh, if anyone calls in. You know, I think part of the problem could also be, um, like, how all these companies, besides Apple, are marketing um, these comparable devices. I mean, mm-hmm. like, Apple already has it out there. And I think a lot of these companies are focusing more on what their product does that Apple doesn't right. instead of the product. And I think that's where they're losing a lot of people. 
I just think that they should yeah. find their their own niche instead of trying to True scoot enough, right? under Apple and then come up on the it's other side. It's tough though because we're looking at a market where Apple came out with the device, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with the smartphone. It's like every smartphone that comes out after an mm-hmm. iPhone is really trying yeah, to compete being compared against to the iPod, iPhone. Yeah. yeah, and same thing with the iPad. It's like they did it first. They did it smart. They did it a little bit connivingly as far as how they released the, the first generation mm-hmm. and then the, the second generation iPad. It's like, well, here here's a jumbo-sized iPod Touch, yeah. but we took the camera out knowing that, okay, well, we're going to put that in the second generation, so everyone's going to upgrade, and then all of a sudden we've got all the... So it's, a, it's an interesting way that they've gone about it, but how does someone like HP compete against that? Some have suggested they should have taken it as a loss leader. They should have said, mm-hmm. you know what? This thing's 100 bucks from the start and said, okay, here's our way to be the iPad killer. Let's take it as a loss leader. Let's make our money elsewhere. And let's put out a device that's really going to hit the in- industry strong. Could that have done something for them? So, This is Category 5 Technology TV. Who's this? Hello? Have we got a caller? Looks like we lost them. Uh, please try again. So close. Yeah, so <laughs> close, guys. So close. Give us another call. Um, should it have been a loss leader? Should they have included a, a deal with their printers? When you buy a printer, you know, get a high-end printer for, mm-hmm. for several hundred dollars, and all of a sudden we'll throw in a, a touchpad, or perhaps we'll, at that point, give you a touchpad for 100 bucks. Would mm-hmm. that have been the way that they should have approached it, rather than just entering a market that's owned by Apple, practically, and saying, okay, well, we've got a c- competitive product, we're going to price it at the same price, and we're going to expect that everyone's going to buy it, and then great big online store sells 615 of them, <laughs> which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no wonder they're hanging their heads in shame and saying, oh, just shut it down. I would be devastated. Mm-hmm. Devastated. Is our caller going to try again? I hope so. Any other thoughts in the chat room there on uh, HP's decision to close down their, their PC and, uh, and touchpad end of their business? Going strictly to software? I think uh, it'll be a ripple effect. I think that we're going to see a lot of... Um, I think it's going to be a, a, a big wake-up call for other tablet manufacturers who are trying to compete against Apple. I think we're really going to see that where we're going to have you know, all of the other device manufacturers saying, oh, wait, maybe we got to approach this differently. Maybe they're going to think about taking things as a loss leader. Because really, I mean, to get into this industry, it's, it's got to be that way. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Final call to uh, pick up the phone. Give us a call. 705-739-1056. Come on. Come on, call. You get them to call. You can get them to call. You know you want to... Come on. That's how she does it. You know everybody's calling. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, they're not. Somewhere. Hmm. They're trying to get through. The lines are just, they're just jammed. That's what the problem is. That's the lines the are jammed. Is. My kids are probably upstairs playing with the phone. Yeah, on off, on off. That's the problem. <laughs> Final call. Anybody want to uh, give us a call? 705-739-1056. We thought we would open up the cat phone tonight. I know it's been a long time since we've had a phone line, so you're not used to this. You're probably mm-hmm. not, uh, you probably didn't even know coming into the show that, uh, hey, I could actually call up and give my feedback. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, I can also open up the phone uh, if you would like to give us a call with a question. If you'd like to ask us a quick question or uh, if you'd like to say hi, simply uh, to, to have a quick chat with, uh, with Krista and myself. I'll just give you that opportunity to give us a quick ring. Nice to see everybody joining us in the chat room. Chris Reich, how are you doing? Lots and lots of people in there. Gadget Wisdom Guru, who uh, has... Uh, been one of our viewers who has surpassed mm-hmm. the point of receiving a thousand viewer points at this point. So oh my goodness! Very, uh, very happy to have you here and participating in in the community. All right. Well, there's a Chris Rick does have a question in the chat room. I don't know if you have a yeah. Hey Chris, a, he says yeah. I've installed Scientific Linux 6.1 and it gives me no GUI. Do you know how to load GNOME or XFCE? Do you just get into a Bosch prompt, or where does it take you? Gadwill's got a link there for uh, some information in the documentation. I'm just curious, like if it's a if it's a Bosch prompt, I mean you can type start x all one word, and uh, that'll that'll launch your your uh, 
your X environment, which will load your your you know your defaults as far as that goes. Uh, I haven't tried Scientific Linux. Uh, is that one that I should be looking at with our with our uh, review as we go forward, looking at uh, different Linux distributions? Might be interesting. Just a quick note that uh, this episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug, and you'll find them online at cat5.tv slash pogoplug. And as well, we've, uh, we're have we sponsored by uh, Planet Calypso. I'd encourage you to join me in the free online game. It's cat5.tv slash calypso. We will uh, we'll try the phone thing again uh, in the future. Uh, I mm-hmm. thought that I would you know uh, provide that opportunity for you tonight. Uh, hopefully, regardless, I've maybe raised some points that might make you go, hmm, you can pop me an email live at category5.tv, and myself or Krista will uh, will raise your concerns on the air uh, mm-hmm. with regards to HP and anything else that we've said on tonight's show. Uh, and we'll, like I say, we'll introduce uh, the cat phone again um, in the future. I'm sorry for the one caller who uh, tried to get through and, uh, and couldn't. So... Uh, do we have any final questions in the chat room before we give away a pogo plug? Because I know oh, let's see, let's see. itching for that. Yeah. I know there was one question here. Now I've lost it. <laughs> Sorry, gang. It's hard to keep up, eh? Pretty active chat room tonight, I think. Oh, this is a non-techie question, but oh. Kodars360 just says, what hey, do you Kodars. say the average wage for a junior web developer is? Uh, in what country? Ah, that would be a, a a key question. I think uh, in Canada, I, I guess it depends, eh? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, do you think like twenty five bucks is a starting wage at this point, or twenty bucks for junior, give or take? I don't know. Uh, maybe less. Fifteen, six. Depends how good What's you are. What's minimum wage? Hmm. It depends on how. Yeah, what yeah. is minimum wage? Is it ten bucks yet? I don't know. <laughs> Keeps you know changing. What? You, you could always, uh, you could always pick up a phone, go through the yellow pages, and, and just call up to different companies and just say, um, I, I, you know, I would be open to this if somebody called me up, and I've, I've had it happen where somebody called up and said, I'm just feeling out the industry, just wondering approximately where wages start at your company as far as web development goes, and I've shared that with them. So. Uh, it's not a. I don't think too many people are going to have a problem with that. Are you asking that question and then find the average, and and you've kind of mm-hmm. got an idea as far as that goes, and that's in your community too. So that's even a bit more of a bonus, right? So we do have a caller on Category Five TV. Who's this? Hey, this is Annoyance. Oh, hey, Annoyance. How are you? All right. How you doing, Rob? <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, Chris is here with me, as you see on the. Hello. On the screen. I. I I can't listen to it while, it's, while I'm talking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good idea. There's probably like a 10-second delay there as far as that goes. Where are you, Where uh, exactly are you calling from tonight? Um, I am in Lawrenceville, Georgia. In Georgia. Cool. Yep. Cool. What can I do for you tonight? I was just going to um, ask you um, about a, a mic issue that I have with my Ubuntu. Okay. 10.10. Uh, do you know, um, is, there, is there some kind of a problem with that? Uh, a mic issue with 10.10? Yeah, it, it just doesn't, it, when I'm on Skype, yeah. the mic won't work. So I have to go into Windows to use Skype. Oh dear. Is it a, is it a USB microphone? or? Um, no, it's just a regular um, mic that you plug into the, into the mic jack. Okay, and you're plugging into the pink port on the back of your computer? Yes. So, oh, it works in your Windows environment, right? So just not in your Linux environment. Yeah, it works fine. Everywhere else. Yeah, and speakers are no problem? Speakers work fine. Chat room? Any ideas? I don't know of of an issue there, Annoyance, as far as that goes. Um, I have not had problems with audio, uh, both mics and and speakers in Ubuntu 10.10. Um, what I would first look at, do you have any other devices which may be interpreted as a mic device in Linux? Because, for example, if I plug in my digital video camera or a webcam, Linux might pick that up as the default capture device for audio. So it may be playing sound through your speakers, but it might be using one of those other capture devices as your microphone. Is that a possibility by any chance? 
but I was hoping that it would uh, do that so that I so I unplugged that device to yeah. see if something else would pick it up, but it didn't. Okay. And when so you do have another device which which possibly um, does it could be pick it, picked up as a microphone is that right? Well, I, I have a webcam built in. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to it it doesn't pick up anything. Oh, it's built in. Okay. As far as sound goes. So you've got a built-in microphone. It's a laptop, I guess. Yes, a laptop. Okay. So you probably have a built-in microphone. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. Like in Pulse Audio, you might uh, just go into your settings, but I'm sure. You're, have you already done that? Gone through kind of the prompts? I, I've gone through everything I could possibly do with that. Yeah, I went through the Pulse Audio. I uh, actually put some uh, other software on the machine, and I, all the audio stuff just doesn't work. Okay. So, are you? Do you see my screen right now? Then. I see your screen right now, yes. Okay, so this is my sound preferences, which I've brought up just by click, single-clicking on the speaker and going sound preferences. And you can see an input. I have my input devices. So I have a Sound Blaster Audigy analog stereo input as my option. And you can see I've got two different uh, devices Bobby, detected. Yes. I, I'm going to have to refresh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't see what you're doing. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So hard to hard to really know what uh, what I could do for you as far as that goes. But I would just go through your your pulse audio configuration annoyance, and and I'm not calling him an annoyance. That's actually his, his <laughs> handle. Just so you know. That's my name. It's a dangerous one to have because uh, because <laughs> you know it could work on so many levels. Um, <laughs> so. I would go through Pulse Audio configuration. If not, I, I, I guess the best advice I can give you is to get involved in the Ubuntu forums. You're on Ubuntu 10.10. Um, so what I would say is get over to uh, ubuntuforums.org. Get registered on there if you're not already on there. And you're going to find with 10.10 there's a ton of support because a lot of people have used it, are using it, and a lot of people have probably already encountered a similar problem to you. So if you post, if you can't find the answer to your question there, Annoyance, I think that you could easily post a new thread and, and get a response reasonably quickly. Uh, but because it is going to be hardware specific, all I can say is go through your Pulse Audio settings by going into your sound preferences. Uh, make sure that your input device is set to the microphone input, not the line input, right? Because that would make a difference. A laptop, yes, a laptop, you're probably sharing the input. So if your microphone, for example, needs to have uh, you know a, a decibel booster because it's plugged into a line input, that could be a problem as well. So. Really hard to say, man. I'm I'm sorry that I don't have a, a definitive answer for you, but will you check out ubuntuforums.org? Sure, I'll do that. Give it a go, and and let us know uh, if if you were able to find the help that you need there, and if not, you know, best I can say is we can try to replicate the problem, but it it could be hardware specific, but those would be the things I would try. Okay. Okay. Th thanks, Robbie. Yeah. Thanks kindly for the call. Nice talking to you. Take care. Okay. Nice talking to you. Bye bye. Cheers. Okay, so we have an opportunity for you. Here, you can tell them all about this. Do you have you used a pogo plug before? I've 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 you've remoted into yes, mine. You've used my pogo that's plug. That's as close as I've gotten. So you you pro you know what? We'll just we will ignore the contest and we'll just kind of slide this over oh, your way. Oh, what contest? There you go. What contest? Yes. We have no idea what you're talking about. And that's the end of the show. <laughs> Okay, here's what I want you to do. Head on over to Category5.tv. Log into the website. This is very important. Make sure you're on our website, Category5.tv. Log in. And as soon as you're logged in, I'm going to give you a quick little step-by-step. -step. Here's what I need you to do. Click on our logo up at the top left-hand side. You're going to see a new button on our website, which is going to give you access to a click race. If you don't see it, hit our logo again. It's coming as long as you are logged into our website at category5.tv. This is your chance to pick up a free pogo plug from category5.tv and cat5.tv slash pogo plug. So head on over there. Category5.tv for your chance. We are waiting for participants. Oh, there's Space Fish. There we go. <laughs>
Head over to category5.tv, log into the website, and make sure you click on Click Race. It looks like that. First five or six mm -hmm. viewers will be, uh, will be approved to uh, participate in the Click Race tonight. Come on, folks. We're still waiting? Where still is everyone? Waiting. Click. Get click, over click. there. Click Race is waiting for you. Maybe they're still limbering. Maybe they're still stretching. It's just so much going on. Hmm. It's, but next week, everybody's going to know what Click Race is. And exactly, and they'll all be prepped be and there. ready yep. and get your sweatbands on. and. Yep. There you go. Phones sitting by the computer. Click Race loading. Yep. <laughs> Head on over to Category5.tv if you're watching live. Click on the Click Race button once you're logged into the website. Very important that you're logged in, otherwise you will not mm -hmm. see that uh, that button. Well, we're waiting for participants. Just a really quick comment here back to the HP. I am Boris Karloff. I hope that's right. It says that HP is crediting the difference to angry customers, apparently. So if you had bought one for $650... Yeah. Well, yeah, and you'd be really upset at that point, but mm -hmm. I think they're going to anger those customers and they're going to create this um, slew of people that are hacking the device beyond that. Category5.tv, get on over there real quick and uh, log into the website and click on the Click Race button. So what happens if no one clicks in? Do I get to go in and I'll just... scared. I am Boris Karloff. I will just click away and then I will win and then I will get the pogo plug anyway. We have a pogo plug device to give you tonight. So join us for Click Race. Cat5.tv Category5.tv Sign on to the website as I said and we're going to give you that if you win on Click Race. I need five, maybe six contestants. Come on, click, click, click. Where is everybody? Click. Come on. Click. Hmm. No one really wants the pogo plug. I think they want the pogo plug. They're just not I sure about click rate. I think they should just give it to me. That would be too Missed bad. Missed you, Chris Reich. I hope that, uh, that everything's well. Please uh, join us in click race. Come on, everybody. It's also hmm. possible, there's a, a pretty high possibility that there's lag. And if you're watching this hmm. after the fact, it's quite possible that viewers who are live on the show, they may be, because there were some issues earlier tonight, they may oh. be a minute or two behind us. So in that case, oh, here they go. Yeah, all at once. Yeah, coming all right, in. everybody. I apologize for the lag. <laughs> Not a lot that I can do about that, but we've got D-Man 810 and Tordo joining us for Click Race. We need uh, three more players. Come on, everybody. It's for a pogo plug, and uh, we want you to participate in Click Race. What Click Race is, uh, for those of you who uh, have never played Click Race, all you have to do is get to our <laughs> website, category5.tv, and from there, log in. Click on Click Race. If you're watching the live show, this is your opportunity to win, and you're going to be clicking like mad, and uh, it's a race. It's mm -hmm. you against other viewers, and whoever comes out on top is going to win a pogo plug. Second prize is 100 viewer points, and third prize is 25 viewer points. So either way, you're going to come out on top. Come on, everybody. We've only got a couple minutes left. Check out Category5.tv. Log in. I want to give this thing away. Mm. And I want to really, do it in, really a, in a really fun way. And that's where Click Race <laughs> comes in. And there's a few people on here actually saying that when they call in, it goes straight to voicemail. That's that's only because we're uh, unable to take calls at the moment. Uh, and again, I wonder if that's what happened with the phone calls. Maybe. We're on a We're still a trying to tweak out some delay bugs here. here. Well, we're on a delay, yeah. it sounds like. So something's up with the internet, something's up with Justin.tv or something where we've hmm. got a, a delay there. And so after the fact, I apologize for, for dead space on the show tonight. Um, but unfortunately, we can't account for when we're a live show. If people are catching it a minute That's true. behind and we say call in now and then we wait a minute so and maybe they don't hear it before we start we just say okay call in now and then we'll tell you why you should call in yes and by the time the we're done the show, it doesn't usually happen that <laughs> way though gad will you can have a pogo plug as long as you get on to click race come on <laughs> and you got to race d-man 810 and tordo 
This is going to push us overtime, gang. I want to give this thing away. And I want to do it on the air. I don't want to have to... to I know. It'd be so much fun on air. Yes. While we're waiting for people to join us on Click Race, we've got D-Man 810, Tordo. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for you to join us. Uh, I'll just let you know that uh, after the show... We're going to be activating a new poll on our website, Category5.tv. we got 23 entries for the name of Spacefish. There he is, looking good. Spacefish needs a name because he doesn't want to be called Spacefish. My suggestion was Bowie. From Bowie's in Space. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Flight of the Concords for the reference. Mm -hmm. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I got. Bowie's in Space. So... We've got 23 entries, including my own, so 22 entries from viewers. I would encourage you to get onto our website this week. Vote for your own. Vote for your favorites. If you didn't get one in, make sure you vote for your favorites. If you submitted one, you can vote for your own. You can vote more than once, but you can only vote once, once per day. That's the rules behind the, uh, behind the competition. At the end of it, we already told you we're giving away 300 viewer points for the winner, uh, the person whose name of... Spacefish is chosen, but also we're going to give you a pogo plug. So, hmm. are we going to get some more people playing Click Race? Guys, what's going on in the chat room? There's tons and tons of people who are joining us live right now. I want to see you in Click Race so that we can, uh, we can give away this pogo plug. There's virtually no downside. To there this. really isn't. You go in, you know, you get some fun times, and then maybe you get a pogo plug. The only problem would be if you use dictation software. Oh, then what do you do? The person do? in the next room might be like, what is going on there? You're sitting there going, <laughs> click, 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 click. And they just think you're stuck or something. Yeah. Like. Dictation <laughs> software, I'm sorry, Andrew Jameson, oh. is probably not the thing to be using with Click Race. Yeah. But you can so use your mouse. That's so amusing, though. Could you record you your that your for and us and touchpad? send it in? Yeah. Come on, gang. This is going to be <laughs> really cool if, you can, if I can get enough people to participate at Everybody in the chat room? Chris Reich, we'll see what we can do about Skype. Anybody else going to join us in Click Race? Otherwise, we're going to have to roll mm. over the prize until next week, unfortunately. But what we'll do is we'll start Click Race a little bit earlier in the show, and we'll let people join in just in case there's lag again next week. D-Man 810, Tordo, I'm yeah. sorry that, uh, that we have run out of time before we've been able to race. Gang, I'm very excited about Click Race. I really want you to participate in it. I know it's a little bit different because mm -hmm. usually we don't have this level of viewer interaction on the show beyond the chat room, which is usually, you know, it's always mm -hmm. quite active, and you're active right now. And I know Gadwill's mentioning that, well, we're actually probably pushing a lot of server resources, and I think we definitely are. Click Race is pretty heavy as far as that goes, but I think we can handle it. So, um, so I really want to see that happen. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll do that next week. We are going to retry Click Race. Unless anybody comes in, we've got room for three more. And we'll just give you one second. Cool? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too that's bad. That's too bad. I was excited for it. I was really excited for it. I got all the, <laughs> all the stuff ready for you and all the exciting stuff. Aww. Well, gang, mm. it has been a fun show regardless of, of our inability yeah. to, to get people to join us and click race on account of and what's going to happen i don't know if you noticed but the phone was ringing like crazy there yeah about, yeah it was. i don't know about eight minutes after we stopped talking about the phone so i think there's like this m major mm -hmm. delay tonight and i think what's going to happen is as soon as i sign off the air all of a sudden a whole bunch of people are going to click on click race and unfortunately you know those in the rss feeds are like what's going on truth be told i think we're suffering from some serious lag tonight and unfortunately that puts us behind and that means that the viewers mm -hmm. don't know that we're doing click race until eight minutes later and here we are saying come so on so they're all going to try to come in everybody's going to try to get click on race and we're going to we're going to be done we're already done hmm. sorry gang next time next time so hopefully next week we will have better success with our uh justin.tv feed in the meantime i hope you have a fantastic week and i apologize that we weren't able to give you a pogo plug tonight but that is going to be rescheduled for next week mm -hmm. and we're going to move things around we'll make sure that uh, that that is going to happen for you but do get onto our website category5.tv find out more about the contest to win a year supply of eco alkalines batteries and get your questions in live at category5.tv cool great well hey i think it was fun regardless i think it was delay. fun gang i hope you had still fun. covered a lot that was great yeah i think so 
So hope you have a great week. Yeah, absolutely. You too. You have a great week, and it's been <laughs> nice having everybody here. Um, now that I'm going to sign off, all of a sudden, everyone's going to come race. in. Here it comes. Oh, yeah, a slew of click racers. Disgruntled emails. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Terribly sorry about that, gang. What can you do, eh? So have a, mm, uh, have a, a fantastic, fantastic week. <laughs> yeah. Weekend. That was weird. <laughs> I was thinking first. <laughs> yeah. See, See ya. ya. Next Tuesday. <laughs> See you then.